Hello, hello, once again, Tanisha here. I am so excited to come to you guys with another week. You're still here. Are y'all sick of me yet? Because these videos, I be sick of me with stuff I be saying. But we're just going to trust God and believe that he's growing us in this. Again, remember, I have to read these and deal with the lesson first. It cuts me first. But, you know, let's just be wounded in Christ together, <laughs> okay? Let's talk about Lot's wife. She's something else. So first things first, you already know, www.tanishakim.com. See what I'm talking about. See what I'm blogging about. Print out week two. Week two, I changed the color a little bit. I think next week I'm going to change the structure, but we'll see. Change the color a little bit. Um, you know, made some adjustments. Every week will look different. And I hope that you enjoy that as we dive into five different women. And then last but not least, support group. What are you waiting for? We are in there chatting it up in that support group. It gets, it gets... It gets, you know, it's a lot in there. It's a lot. But what I'm grateful for is the variety of women. We have newlyweds. We have women who have not been married. There are some seasoned women. They don't talk as much because, you know, usually people who have been married for 30, 40 years are not using the internet that much, you know. But I do appreciate when they call me and let me know what they think. And I do share that with women whenever I get that information. But I am enjoying it. So please join the support group, guys. All right. And don't forget, if you don't answer those questions, both of them, both of them, B-O-F-F-U-M, both of them. Okay, if you don't answer both of the questions, I'm not going to accept it. So there are some of you who have been um, denied because you only answered one or you did not um, answer any. And it's not personal. It is, is what it is. It's business. I need to know that you understand what's going on because, again, I'm, this is going to be a safe space. Okay, so now that we've handled the business, let's get into the Bible study. Remember, if you do not have the book, it's okay. You have this. So this gives you the actual biblical scriptures to look into. And then you don't need both books. You'll need the book and this because this has the book in it just with added questions. So we are on lesson number six. Lot's wife. So you're going to find that in Genesis, okay? Um, one thing that I did include with these scriptures for Lot's wife is that I included the background of Abram and Lot coming together and picking the land and moving in that. I thought that was important to kind of know her background, her history. And then I also included um, information about, you know, what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. And then in addition to that, I went ahead and finished out the chapter with... Um, what happened with her daughters afterwards. And then there was a reminder spoken by Jesus Christ himself um, that mentioned Lot's wife. Okay, even Jesus didn't call her by name. He just called her Lot's wife. So let's get into it. The first thing that I want to note about the story is that you, everybody, you know, you kind of pretty much know this. Sodom and Gomorrah, they were in there cutting up. And um, before that, there was a negotiation. I called it like an equation conversation. Um, there was a negotiation, a bargain conversation that God and Abraham, Abraham had. Um, it was a nice little conversation where Abraham was, he, you know, God was like, we about to roll out over here. And this, this, you know, it's going to be some stuff going on. I'm going to see what's going on. People is calling me. Let me see what's up. And Abraham was like, well, now wait a minute now, you know, I got people over there. So what if you find this many people, you know, okay, well then what if you find this many people, will you destroy it? And, you know, they kind of went back and forth until finally God was like, I get what you're saying. You know, obviously he's God. He knew what he was saying the whole time, but how amazing is it for a lot to be acting a fool because he was, um, to be surrounded by foolishness, this nasty, lasciviousness, just, ugh, yep. He's surrounded by craziness in Sodom and Gomorrah, and his family is still looking out for him, and they're still pleading to God on his behalf. So let's just include that. You know, how amazing is that? How many of us have had praying grandmothers? Had a praying grandmother? Okay. How many of us have had people, you know, we go through stages, and so people just praying and just interceding for us. Right now, our church is in a consecration, and... Um, every month, me and my family kind of do like a theme what we're going to study. And so my husband was like, this month for our theme, we are going to pray for different people. And so I just thought that was amazing that Abraham did that. It just reminded me what we're doing right now, just praying for people, different random people in our family. And in the midst of everything that's going on, I also made sure to include what happened when the angels came and they were kind of, you know, casing the city, kind of seeing what's going on. Those men, they pulled a lot, pulled them into his house. The men came and Lot offered up his own daughters. Um, who were virgins. Now, something to note too, that the daughters were engaged. Um, when you read the scripture, you'll note that. So it wasn't like the daughters didn't have, um, weren't about to not be virgins technically, um, but they were betrothed. Okay. So they had a, a nice little courtship process thing going on. Um, but 
as a result of that, the men didn't want that. The men wanted the men. And so um, they uh, Lot was saved and he was warned, gather your family, get your daughters and your sons. Okay, so that's you people might be trying to figure out where the son thing came from in the scripture. It came because Lot had son-in-laws. He went to them and they didn't believe him. They kind of laughed. Um, so from there, they're warned the next morning, get up, get out of here. They're taken out of the city. They're warned, do not look back. And of course, we know in the story that Lot's wife looks back and then she is turned into a pillar of salt. So um, the first point I wanted to make about the lesson is um, Lot's wife forgot to focus forward. Um, everybody has to leave stuff, okay? We all, we have to leave jobs. We have to leave churches, okay? Um, family, sometimes in this Christian walk, is hard. You, you just have to move around and... and and every departure is not um, every departure is not easy. Every departure is not fun, you know. But it is what it is, and so sometimes it's hard. But what it, this was really hard for me to really dig into because my frustration with Lot's wife was, look what you were surrounded by. Why even look back? Why even look back at what you were surrounded by? Your daughters being, your, your own husband saying, take my daughters instead. Clearly you're surrounded by, you know, sinful lifestyle. She became so accustomed to that, um, that she wasn't looking at what she could have had in front of her. And we do that a lot as just not even as wives or mothers or human beings. We do that as just believers. We put limits on God. And sometimes, you know, think about that in the Bible. How many times have we read the story with the Israelites and they're so excited that God saved them. And then soon after that, oh my God, we should have stayed in Egypt. Yes, we was getting beat, but at least we had, you know, they're cutting up. But we need to focus full. So another thing that I wanted to know is some people have trouble past. And um, it's hard to focus forward and whether you've, you know, no matter what you've done in your past. So I wrote down, we all look back, but don't let those memories of the past haunt your present situation. And people will do that. They'll bring up your past to you. They'll remind you of who you are, who you used to be. Um, I have a video. And if I remember, I'll link it in the um, in the comments or, or maybe in the blog post. But I have a video where I'm talking about going from infamous to famous. And that video is about me, just how, you know, my attitude and just the, the life that I dealt with because I had so much hurt and pain and anger in me. And I had to deal with that. And God had to deal with my heart and soften it. And um, you can do that. But there are some people who remember and um, they'll be like, uh-uh, you know, but they don't know me. They know Tanisha Graham. They don't know Tanisha Kemp. She's somebody totally different. Um, so that can be hard. So you have to remember to focus forward. Number two, remember your why, okay? We want to make sure that you are remembering your why. Look at what you are letting go, okay? She was leaving a horrible land. She was leaving a horrible area. She was going to where God said go. Do you really think that it was just magic that two people just came and blinded some people that was going to attack and bust up in your house and snatch some strangers? Do you really think that anybody else could have done that but the only wise and true? God a no nobody could do that but him but you know you have to look at that and say look I'm leaving this I don't want no more of it so anything that she should have looked at should have looked at why she was there I don't care if she has some shoes I don't care if she has some clothes I don't care if she has some little scarves she wanted to keep maybe you will make a head wrap in the new land okay with new skin you're gonna be all right look forward um and then the next thing I wrote down is you know that sin is not good for you um so why why are you focused on that? What you used to do, what you could have had. Um, a lot of times people too who live like a lifestyle where they maybe did like illegal stuff and got money really, really quick. That money just runs through your fingertips. Um, why? Why go back? Why go back to that? Th that could cause you harm, hurt, danger, hurt your family. And then Sodom and Gomorrah was nasty. Okay. Weak men, weak future son-in-laws. Did you really, did you really want that? Did you really want to stay there? Mm, I don't think so. And um, confused daughters, you know, look at what the confusion that she had that moment to look back and now there's nobody there to guide her daughters and say, yeah, you know, we were in this land and yes, you had picked these little crazy weak boys to be married to, um, you know, or they picked you or whatever, but we go move on to a new land. God has something better for you. If you're so surrounded and just engulfed by your hurt and pain of leaving a situation, you can't help your children. You can't help the people around you that God needs you to help and move and push forward because you're so focused on what you're leaving behind. You need to leave it behind. The third thing is you are your biggest obstacle. Um, there's a quote by Henry Ford. It says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. 
we are reminded um, that whatever you say you are, you are. That's why it's important to speak life. And I told you guys last week, I am so hard on myself. Even in dealing with this, um, it makes me nervous. Not because I don't feel like I'm capable of delivering any information to women and helping you grow and stuff like that. But it's because of what we have dealt with um, and everything else. Just, you know, people's opinions and and just how they come down on anybody. Like for example, with the comments, um, think I'm thankful I'm able to kind of still flush them out, but I have never had so many pornographic, foul language comments thrown in my videos. I have never dealt with that. I've been on YouTube for years and I've never dealt with that until I was like, you know what, let's spend the next month doing this. Um, but it's okay, it is what it is. God's gonna bring it to my attention and I'm gonna get it deleted and we're just gonna move on, but I have to focus forward. I don't wanna be an obstacle that's gonna stop God's plan for my life from coming to pass because I'm cutting up, because I'm ignoring his plan, his will, and his way. And guys, so I know you guys are wondering where that scripture in Luke comes from. It comes from Jesus. So we're going to go to Luke 17. And here Jesus is talking about the second coming and what's going to happen, what it's going to look like. So one thing that he knows is going to be like as in the days of Noah. And then as you keep reading, he says um, in verse 28, it was the same as it was in the days of Lot. People were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. I'm in the Amplified version. Carrying on business as usual without regard for their sins. But on the very day that Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone, burning sulfur from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. So basically, he's just letting them know, hey, it's going to be just like that. People in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were minding their own business. They was partying, you know, being nasty, okay? And they were cutting up, being sinful, and... um. Boom, dead, okay? That's what he's letting you know. It's going to be just like that. All right, so in verse 31, on that day, whoever is on the housetop with his belongings in the house must not come down and go inside to take them out. And likewise, whoever is in the field must not turn back. 32, remember, this is the Amplified version, remember what happened to Lot's wife when she looked back. In the King James Version, it just says, remember Lot's wife. Jesus didn't have to say much else. He didn't need the Amplified Version. Just remember, do you want to be a pillar of salt? In this passage of scripture, he's referring to being left. Do you want to be left behind? And let me just explain, left behind, there's fire, okay? There's no left behind. Everybody like, oh my God, you know, like what we going to do now? You get to plan stuff. We're not talking about that. Um, you know, do you want to go with Jesus or no? That's the main point of this. So when you are looking at this lesson, I hope that you're looking at it, um, through honest eyes, this was a hard lesson for me um, because she was called a worldly wife. And I don't know that I would have described her as a worldly wife. No, don't get it twisted. The Where she lived was quite worldly, but um, I maybe would have thought of her as a hindrance. Um, maybe would have thought of maybe another word to describe her situation. Um, but I really hate that as a result of that, so much happened. Um, and then she wasn't there again to help her daughter. She's standing there as a pillar of salt. She's not there to guide her daughters, help her daughters. And as a result, they're sleeping with their father, making little crazy, illegitimate, incest babies. And just, it was a lot. It was so much because nobody was there to cultivate and nurture that um, and explain to them and help them grow and heal through that process. So let me just say this to anybody who's dealing with leaving and departing. Leaving is, is bad. I had to even, I'm a cheer coach now and I had to talk to my girls um, a couple weeks ago because we lost the game. They love cheering when we winning. When we're losing though, they don't want to cheer. Now they're little girls. But I had to explain to them, that's when the football players need you the most. That's when the fans need you the most because they're down. They need you to lift them up. They need you to encourage them. And so I will say that same thing to you women. You know, that's when you need God the most. That's when you need to go to God. It's okay for you to say, God, I'm hurting. I don't know why I'm here or how I got here, but I don't want to be here. And then when he removes you, you know, sometimes we do have a where we're like, that lifestyle looked like it could have been okay, but you have to go after God. Focus forward. Remember your why. Do not be your own obstacle. Get out of your own way so you can get out of God's way so he can bring to pass what he has for you, all right? So your homework is write down God's desires for your life and be honest about what is hindering you from achieving them. And right now, I just want you to focus on that because you know, quit playing, you know. You know exactly what it is. And um, we're going to focus on that. Just focus on that. And then think about why are you stopping you from doing that? We're not going to blame anybody else right now. We're not worried about people saying crazy things to you, giving their opinions. We're just talking about you. 
you? What are you doing to block God's plan for your life? Father God, we just thank you today. God, we just ask that you just help us to be honest with ourselves, Lord God. Reveal to us through the Holy Spirit what we need to do to get out of our own way because we are blocking your plans for our lives, Lord God. And just as Jesus gave a warning to the disciples, to the people that were listening to remember Lot's wife, let us also as women here today in 2021 remember Lot's wife. God, you've saved us from a life of sin. You've saved us from the fiery pits of hell, Lord God. You have called us to create. You've called us to lead, to teach, to culture, to, to, to nurture, Lord God, to be wives, to be mothers, to be women who fear the Lord, who revere and reverence, respect our husbands. You've called us to do so many amazing things, God. We will not accomplish any of them without you. We will not accomplish any of them if we spend our whole time going forward and looking back. But God, we stop that right now. Help us to remember Lot's wife, Lord God, and get out of our own way, Lord God. And most importantly, be honest with ourselves on why we're scared. We're not scared of what you've called us to be. We're scared that we're actually going to do it, that we're going to be successful at it, and that lives will be changed and saved because of it. But God, you need us in that position. And we don't want to miss out on our opportunity to help someone else or to grow in you, God. So God, forgive us for standing in the way of your plan for our lives, Lord God, and your plan for our households, Lord God. And help us to grow in you and to be bold and courageous and to stand flat-footed and run away from sin. Run away from our past because we are changed, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we are a new creation in the name of Jesus, God, and we are not afraid. We are not afraid to let your light shine through us in Jesus' name. All right, so that's all I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. We will see you tomorrow. We're going to talk about Herodias, okay, Herod's wife. Let's see. Bye.